When it comes to saving lives, odds mean nothing. We are constantly reminded that the will to survive can overcome most any obstacle. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of strength, hope, and determination on Rescue 911. We begin on January 7th, 1990, outside Colorado Springs, Colorado, where clear skies and light winds made conditions perfect for an early morning flight in a hot air balloon. Tex Houston had called me up to ask me if I would help him out. He wanted to fly that Sunday morning. And the people that he had helping him, the crew, uh, were not very experienced. And he just asked me if I would come along and give him a hand that morning. Retired Air Force flight instructor Dave Hollenbaugh had been ballooning for 12 years. But George Nicholas and his family had no prior experience. We were the first ones to start unloading the balloon, but yet we were the last ones to take off. Uh, everybody else kind of got their balloon together faster and was gone. Texas balloon had been uh, into the shop for some maintenance, and the skirt of the balloon had been detached, so we, we had to stop and, and hook the skirt back up. This made us the last of the five balloons to launch. Tex asked Linda Nichols if she would like to uh, go for the, the first balloon ride, and uh, after some thought, she declined. And then he he asked uh, Nichols' daughter Stephanie if she'd like to go along. He then asked Alex, and Alex just practically bounded into the basket. He was just waiting for the opportunity. Eleven-year-old Alex Nicholas had never ridden in a balloon before. He was very excited. Uh, Alex loves adventures. He loves mechanical things. He was very ready to go. He's pretty fearless. Alex's mother, Linda, watched from the ground as they took off. As I saw Alex go up in the balloon, I just felt excited for him. I really felt no fear. I had full confidence in Tex. I had full confidence in the safety of, it, of hot air balloons. Okay, everybody, let's go. The rest of the ground crew there said, well, why don't you guys come along in the car and follow in the chase vehicle? I didn't even really know that was a process. I didn't really realize that a car followed the balloon and maintained radio contact. Yellow Rose uh, from Chase, uh, over. We realized that after Tex launched, the winds had picked up, and I was beginning to feel a little concerned. I kept this to myself. Uh, Roger, uh, copy. We're going to do our best to catch up with you. After a 20-minute flight, they began looking for a safe place to land the balloon. When we pulled ahead. There was a rather large field that we could see. Tex saw it. He got on the radio, and he was saying, I'm going to put the balloon down in this field north of Hogden Road. He told us which road to turn on so that we could be there when he landed. And they were descending pretty fast. Right at the time when uh, the basket almost got to the ground, there was a little knoll, and we could not see the basket then. There he goes. There was like this movement in the balloon that would show that the basket had obviously touched the ground. Suddenly, and very much the surprise of all of us, I'm sure, the balloon shot back up into the air. And I said to myself, Tex really botched that one. Oh, my. A second later or two, a man is coming up over that knoll, and... <laughs> I remember thinking, gosh, how amazing. There, I mean, there happened to be a guy in the field at the time. He, you know, they must have almost landed on top of him. And then somebody said, that looks like well, that's Tex. Well, if that's Tex, I mean, where's, where's Alex? And then it was like this uh, instant realization that, well, Alex is in the blue. When George and Linda Nicholas spotted the balloon pilot running across the open field by himself, they realized that their 11-year-old son Alex was now alone in the hot air balloon, 
and he had no idea how to fly it. It was the last thing pilot Tex Houston ever imagined would happen. After making the decision to land there, I come down fairly rapidly. Okay. And I tell Alex at the time to drop down in the bottom of the basket if it's going to be a hard landing. And I can see that it's going to be a windy landing. Even though you train and everything and you practice, it's not like doing it for real. Okay, now. I hit a little harder than I expected. When the balloon tips over, it just throws me right out of the basket. And the balloon then goes up. I mean, it really shot up. I totally lost it at that point. I panicked. I, I didn't know what was going to happen. At that point, I thought the only thing to do now was just to wait until he crashed. We heard this very, very frightened voice over the CB radio, help me, help me, I'm scared, I'm scared. And I don't recall what I said to him. I do remember saying to myself, God help me do this, God help me do this. We immediately started off after the balloon, which by now was at least a mile away from us and possibly as much as two miles. Are you all right? Are you all right? Did you get hurt? Yeah, yeah, fine. I really started mentally preparing myself for, okay, this this isn't going to be a disaster. This is it. How, how is it going to happen? The balloon's going to catch on fire. He's going to jump. Uh, he's going to crash into power lines. Uh, he's going to run out of fuel. I mean, I just started sort of going through a Rolodex of, of pictures of how it was going to end. I, I couldn't fathom that anybody in a balloon the first time, that age, with those kind of winds and alone and everything else, could land this thing. I'm going to do everything I can to get you beyond these trees and rocks. Now what I want you to do is tell me what you see out in front of you. Tell me what you see. At this time, he wasn't flying the aircraft. He was strictly a passenger, hanging on for dear life. Uh, it occurred to me somewhere along in here that I had to convey to Alex that he had to become the pilot. Okay, what I have to do, Alex, is kind of get you down a little lower. I need to get you down a little lower. He had obviously watched Tex very closely during the time they were flying Remember, together and had learned enough to help him operate the burners in the balloon. He knew if you put heat in the balloon, it would go up. Well, the last thing he wanted that balloon to do was come down. So every time it started to come down, he'd heat it. I was concerned that he would panic and overheat it and fly it up into higher altitudes where the winds were much stronger and he would be long gone. He'd be out of radio range and we'd never catch up with him. All right, Alex. Now look down at the instrument. Find the long one with a pointer on it. Alex has a condition called attention deficit disorder. Straighten the level. Keep talking to me. What's that instrument reading? Can you tell One of the things he has a hard time doing a lot of times is, is sequential steps to a goal. Uh, and I wondered if that would cause him difficulty. Just hang in there, buddy. Hang in there. Can I talk to my mom, please? Sure. When he asked to speak to me, I had mixed feelings because I... I wanted to talk to him and I wanted to tell him a lot of things, but I, I also wanted to appear calm and confident in him. Okay. I'm going to turn you back to Dave now. I held out as long as I could without breaking down. and I made it shorter than probably Alex wanted to because I didn't want to have him hear me get upset. I was concerned because we were so far behind him that I had no idea what the terrain was like in front of him. So if I decided it was a point to land, I didn't know what I would be landing him into. We're going off the, out of the county map. Because we were off the map, it became apparent to me that we needed to get somebody to help us navigate. There's a farm over okay. there. We just saw a farmhouse back in the trees, and we saw some guy on a tractor. My son's up in a balloon up there. He's all by himself. He's 11 years old. You need to call 911. Okay, let's go. John Wealthy climbed in to help navigate. Uh, down here, after get there was no question in my mind about going with him. If I could help in any way, there was no question. Yellow Rose Chase Camelot, go ahead, Raleigh. 
On a nearby road, ballooning instructor Raleigh Elkins had been monitoring his CB radio after he'd landed his own balloon. Raleigh, I've got an 11-year-old balloon. Raleigh says, do you need help? And I said, all I can get. Raleigh was very energized. He was like not scared or panicked. He didn't panic to us. He was more like, this is an adventure. We can do this. Uh, this is not beyond the realm of possibility to get him down. Why don't we, uh, how about teaching him a landing sequence? Can, uh, I came up with the concept, which I'd used with other students, adult students, only use the burner when we're counting. I had just flown earlier that day. I mean, I knew at what point we can arrest a descent. So we decided we could stair-step the balloon down to the ground. When I got in the car, he was over a thousand feet above the ground. So we stair-stepped him until he was only a couple hundred feet off the ground. Burn! Stop! Stop! Okay, I got it! Okay, yeah. only, when we, only when we count, Dave, that was too much. You only... At about this time, Alex, on his own initiative, asked us if he could throw a drop line. What do you think? He wants to drop the rope. There's always a danger that it may hang up in trees, it may hang up in power lines. If he thinks he needs it, maybe we better let him. Alex? Go ahead. Throw it over. We now had dangling from that balloon a rope of 75 feet in length, a given dimension. We could better judge how high he was above the trees. We eventually got ahead of him, and I could see the balloon was going to cross our path along this road, and there was a big open field. It was like Dave was saying, Alex, this is it. You, you are going to have to land the balloon. This is the field. There's no time left. You have to do it. I uh, told him about the rip line, which is the line that opens up the top of the balloon that you, that you use uh, when you're ready to land, but I cautioned him very emphatically not to pull it until I told him, this line is red. Uh, if you pull the red line in flight, you're done for. At about 30 feet, yeah, I said, Dave. rip the top out. No, no. Pull. Okay. Pull. Pull, 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 I'm running up and uh, he gets out. I'm crying and wailing and blubbering and he's sort of like wide-eyed and looking at me and I don't know that he's ever seen me cry before. Everybody else got out of the vehicle, and I completely broke down. I still get a little emotional about this. The intensity of the whole thing just overwhelmed me. This most intense aviation emergency I've ever had to deal with. And I was perfectly safe. I never left the ground. I think I was the last person to get there. I was crying, and I put my arms around him, and he said, Mom, what's the big deal? What's, it, what's everybody so upset about? In recognition of Alex's skill and bravery in landing the balloon, Tex gave the boy his silver pilot's wings. I'm not angry at Tex. I'm glad he took me on that balloon flight. I became pilot first time up, and it was pretty exciting. I really admired him for what he did. I was very proud. I always worried about what he was going to do. And I guess what that did for me was, you're going to be okay. You're going to make it. If you can do that, you're going to handle life. 